Let's talk about the first largest holder of U.S. Treasuries. And we've talked about this on the pod. That is Japan. And so there was a good post. I saw it on Instagram that was talking about how the U.S. basically just bailed out Japan Ooh. from economic crisis. Very similar to what they've been doing here, printing money. That's probably where part of our trillion dollars a quarter is actually going. So let me read it for us. Uh, Jake Rosenthal. Jake Rory, shout out to you. The U.S. basically bailed out Japan last week to save the treasury market, and nobody is talking about it. Most people have no idea it even happened, but it's a very big deal. Hold on to your Bitcoin, gold, and other hard assets. M2 is going to rip higher. Market. Samson Jagoras. Yeah, so it says here, on May 8th, the U.S. and Japan agreed to intervention plan in which the U.S. will supply Japan with dollars in exchange for yen. Mm. The reason the U.S. is stepping in to help with this intervention is because Japan is the largest holder of U.S. treasuries in the world, and the U.S. wants to prevent Japan from dumping its treasuries in exchange for dollars at all costs. While it may not seem like a big deal to most, this strong indicator that something is terribly wrong in both the Japanese and U.S. economies. If Mm. this... FX, Forex swap line proves to be nothing more than a band-aid over a bullet wound, and Japan is forced to sell their U.S. Treasuries to, treasuries to defend the yen. Japan could reignite the banking crisis here in the United States. And so this is a big deal, and um, it's kind of falling in line with, I don't know if anybody else saw this. I didn't put it in here, but it just made me think of it. Last week, the first commercial portfolio loan that traded for 308 million sold or got sold off for 200 million. So $108 million loss on this commercial loan. I saw another building that had sold for 132 million that just sold for like 21 million or something to that effect. And so the turmoil in commercial real estate and U S treasuries is coming down the pipe. We haven't seen those come full term yet. A lot of those don't mature until 2025. We're not out of the woods. So for those of you who are listening, thinking about buying a business, you need to start stocking cash. For those of you who are thinking about raising money, you need to start raising money now because there might not be a lot of money available in the future. For those of you who think that uh, debt is hard to come by right now because it's quote unquote too expensive, um, it might be expensive in the sense that you just can't get it Mm -hmm. unless you have unbelievable balance sheet in the future. And so these these fractures start to happen in in the economy and and people don't generally pay attention to it until it kicks them in the face. A lot of entrepreneurs are really good at sticking their head in the sand until all of a sudden it's a problem. Those are the people that are like, oh, 2008 was so hard. I didn't see it coming. It's like, you didn't see it coming. How did you not see it coming, right? But people who were paying attention, who were reading the news, who were aware of what was happening around the world geopolitically because we are the largest financier of all these global economies, Uh, Those are the people who were prepared, right? And the absence of preparation is where failure actually exists. I mean, I bet it probably moves in the same way that that S curve moves, where it's like you have that 10% on the inverse, and then it's just like. So hold on to your underwear. It's uh, going to get a little messy out there. But in the middle of all that is great opportunity. And we haven't had a good correction since 2008. So I'm ready. Bring it. Yeah. I got to get ready candidly in in some ways, in some ways I'm ready, but you know, reading that, hearing that it's like, there are ways to be more ready. A hundred percent. And so, I mean, some of the other ways you can be ready, it's just like, you know, your own food stock supply. I mean, things could get, we saw what happened during COVID with toilet paper. Yes. <laughs> like you better stock up on some toilet paper, stock up on some liquor, stock up on some rice, some <laughs> meat. Uh, I'm not kidding. This is ammunition. It's, Ammun- <laughs> yeah. It's only when things get crazy, right? Because, if we're in the know as, as content creators and we're even more in the know as business owners and think about all the business owners are probably more in the know because they're connected economically to what's going on. Think about how disconnected the consumer is, the everyday person just working a job and be like, I just got laid off. I didn't see that coming. You didn't see that coming. <laughs> you didn't see it coming because you have your head in the sand, right? And so those are the people we got to worry about. Those are the people who are going to cause mass chaos because they're unprepared. Facts, man. I'm, but I think that's also why we do this pod, right? And it's like, honestly, hearing that person, their head in the sand or they're focused on, you know, whatever they're focused on. It's like, part focus of me, on what they're going to do this weekend, yeah. where they're going to go drink beer. Part of me is like the person who's the founder of that company. I just like publicly want to be like, dude, prepare your people. Like, yeah. even if you don't physically do it with, you know, 
make the conversations a part of, you know, what, why are you having team meetings for if you ain't talking about the reality of running a business and growing today? Yeah, and what I've always said is during economic crisis, people will still spend money. They don't stop spending money, but what happens is their expectation of quality goes up. I think everybody experienced that during 2020 where, like, you went out to eat and you got a burger that was not that great. The service was not that great, and it was twice as expensive as it was previously. It's like, why would I pay for this, right? Now, people were still going out to eat. I just didn't go back to that restaurant. I went to the next one that had the better service and the better quality and the better burger. So it's, a, it's also a conversation in and around of like, we need to foolproof our product so that we're the best. Yeah. We're, the, we're the go-to standard. And even though it might be more expensive, we are the category of one where nobody plays in the, in the playing field that we do. But if you're just like everybody else, you have a very consistent product with what the rest of the market is doing, you're a dime a dozen. Well, you can bet even in, in a downtime, somebody still is going to want that Louis bag. The Louis bag, need their HVAC fix. <laughs> They're going to need my J's. Going to still exercise, you right. know, like still need to go to the doctor, still need to get their teeth cleaned. Right. Still going to go to the chiropractor, right? That's still going to need to buy or sell a business. All that still exists. So are yeah. you the best? Well, there's a silver lining in that is that uh, on, the, on the other side of perilous times, you know, there's the buildup that that's where my mind immediately goes to is navigating that, preparing now, navigating that, and then the buildup should the Lord permit us to have time. 